Gianluigi Nicolosi, Daryl, John Maxman, Brian Shakira Nirmit, Charlie Rebic, Josh, Amy Nicole Lewis, Sudhaat Sangya, Don Dallas, Matt Gallinger, Curtis, I don't think I ever, you just can call me on. I'm in Hanoi, Vietnam, Singapore, Ting Mai, Thailand, Chiang Mai, Thailand, Oakland, California, Bali in Indonesia, Chiang Mai, Thailand, Chiang Mai, Thailand, Da Nang, Vietnam, Singapore, Hanoi, Vietnam, one of the MCs and presenters, Operations, Admin, Branding and Content Design, Project Assistant, Project Assistant, U.S. Launch Coordinator, A Researcher, Research Assistant, Research Analyst, Local chapter leader. Local chapter leader. I'm also working on the EFL program. EFL program. There's been quite a few, to be honest. The rules of uh, dating, sex, and consent. The sex dating and consent topic. I think because this topic actually shows the big differences between the Eastern and the Western culture. It's not so much sitting down listening to a speech. Um, it's more interacting and learning to and, and listening to everyone. You get to really understand and learn a lot about a lot of people. The psychological differences in Eastern, Eastern with Easterners and Westerners. It was a really cool turnout that we had. It was like equally, pretty equally balanced between locals and foreigners. And it was really cool hearing about the differences between those things. And I think the topic was really cool. The like conspiracy theories one was also really fun, just because it was like interesting and it brought out some interesting opinions. Psychedelics. Psychedelics. Not only the spiritual aspect and the community aspect of it, but also the scientific capabilities of psychedelics. A lot of people came up to me after the, the, the talk and were like, wow, we actually had no idea that this is what psychedelics do. And I learned a lot from that talk as well myself. Um, and to be able to uh, delve into the scientific research behind that was um, really enlightening. The ethics of comedy. Jokes were p was probably the best. Because I feel like I never thought about this topic before. Because there was most disagreement. A lot of people had very different opinions on it. So because of that, it was, it was very interesting conversations that we had, um, different people's perspectives and sh everyone sharing their stories. anti natalism I'm super passionate about the environment. I constantly think that the world would be better off without any human in the world. But this is a topic that is very, my mind, in my mind, constantly finding each other because while I think that the world would be better off without any humans, I'm very fond of like little kids and little children, you know, especially the ones in the mountain that I went to teach. It's, it's very conflicting, that's the word, it's very conflicting. But going through this presentation has opened up several more ways to think about it, like concept. Of features. Being able to mix with a whole bunch of new people and new minds and new ideas, that's definitely my favorite thing of it. It's developed stronger friendship. Posting was my favorite part of this whole process. Fully remote working, Trello and Slack. I loved being able to, to create a space that like was a hub for like really deep, really awesome discussions. I met a lot of really cool people. Interacting with people that have like different um, opinions and different mindsets. Yeah, making new friends that also like to talk about similar things. So I feel like a lot of my friends these days, like we talk about very shallow topics, the same old like, how are you doing? Are you settling down soon? Um, but Real Talk gives an avenue to talk about more intellectual topics and getting to meet people who are excited to talk about these things also is nice. My boss is very friendly, John is very friendly and he cares for the team members. <laughs> it's, just, it's a really cool feeling to be able to like hold space for these events and create these spaces and guide people towards these really cool discussions. The people is obviously the best part. Getting up on stage and talking to people is definitely a flow state. You just have like a sense of community and a sense of like uh, really getting to know the people that you're with. The whole thing is centered around like learning from other people and I think that's a really valuable experience for, for everyone who's there. Spreading awareness about Real Talk and all the topics that you guys are preparing to share about and like garnering interest in people to attend the event. So I think so far I've been able to spark a lot more interesting conversations with the people that I meet and a lot of people are actually very supportive and they're like, wow, this is a great idea. I'm so excited to attend the event. All the, all the members of this organization are all lovely and dedicated and they all buy the, the organization's vision.
like I can work anywhere and anytime that I'm able to. Creating community spaces where these really cool in-depth discussions were happening and often obviously doing it abroad here, it's, it's cross-cultural, so you're getting to know really unique perspectives from uh, local Thai people or uh, Thai people are getting to interact with foreigners in ways that they don't usually get. I just find that the, the community of people that come to your talk, Hanoi, Reiki, are just so accepting of everyone and everything. It was like the coolest fucking people come out to these, sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to curse. Uh, the coolest people would come out to these events, and also a lot of the coolest local people, the coolest foreigners would come out to these events, and also, and also the coolest uh, locals would come out. I was meeting a lot of really awesome Vietnamese people that I was able to, to learn a lot about kind of local culture. I mean, I love, I love presenting and I love talking about these things and cultivating people's interest and stuff, but ultimately just like when I was getting off the stage and going down and meeting people and sitting with them and diving into conversations with them. Even if they don't agree with someone's ideas, they don't shut them or show them and say they think that they're a bad person or something. They're just like, oh, okay, well, you've got a different idea, cool. Wanna go get a beer or wanna go get a smoothie or something? Like <laughs> Working through the presentations because I learned so many new things, most of which um, I've never known before. I get exposed to these new, interesting ideas and debates and arguments. It's hard to like go from a hosting role where you're like up on stage and you're like looking like the expert on things to like jumping into a group and everybody's like, oh, you know all about this. I'm like, no. And <laughs> like, I know a little bit more than like probably most people in this room, but like, I'm not an expert. The experience of of just people being interested in a topic and wanting to discuss it and, and hearing their different perspective and, and kind of that realization of like, oh yeah, like I never thought about that perspective before. But uh, it was like a, a weird dynamic when you like get off, jump off the stage and jump into a group because everybody's all of a sudden listening to you, like you're a professional. But actually I think probably my favorite part is, is sitting down with people before and figuring out why people showed up. By far the most fun I had was just like when the night was over and several groups would stick around and we just stay late that night just like theorizing about stuff and bouncing ideas or just chatting and chatting and chatting. Acceptance, it's, it's like pure acceptance and just just there for the, the chat, which is really nice, man, and it's, it's hard to find that nowadays. In the um, uh, at hosting events, like it did become like a centerpiece of a lot of like of, uh, it was like the centerpiece of the social scene in a lot of them. And everybody said it was like their favorite part of their week. I went from like not really knowing a lot of people in Da Nang to like knowing a large part of the community and being seen as like a community leader within that, which was really cool. It was really cool to like be able to network and get to know people. And I could like go out any like to like any given social event. Da Nang was tiny, it was a small city. <laughs> but uh, I could go to any given social event and I would know people in the crowd and would be able to talk about like, the topics and they would like be able to like tell me things that they didn't have time to, to talk about in the in the events. So it was like these conversations would be carried on in different in different places elsewhere and it was really cool to like just jump back into that. And the tiny city of Da Nang very quickly became like kind of like a celebrity, but like more just like a person that everybody just wanted to talk to about these subjects. As long as the events are running well, uh, as long as you do a good job posting it, I think you're kind of like bound to just become like quote, like become a friend of basically everybody that comes out consistently and everybody sees you as like somebody that they really admire and want to host and like want to talk to about these things, which is a cool feeling. My role is incredibly varied. It's different every week. We're doing different things every week. There are so many things I've done. I'm in charge of managing like the finances and admin portion for the real talk and like tying up any loose ends that we have for the team. And I also manage like the front of house for all the events that we host in Singapore. The welcoming guests and like talking to them at the event and also helping to manage our Instagram account. Assisting in general. So I will start looking, doing some background research on, for example, cancel culture, um, looking at current news articles, looking at um, YouTube resources, looking at online um, philosophy and uh, published scientific papers to give me a general overview of the topic. Assist the research team in doing the best research that they can. We tackle a different topic, either in one week blocks or two week blocks, depending on how in depth we need the research. Which things to investigate when doing research. Make sure that it's going to be worthwhile or that we can transfer it into useful analysis that we can put into the presentations. 
We then sit down and discuss it with the rest of the research team, identify areas where um, we're potentially missing out research, where uh, areas that would be really interesting, and then going back to the drawing board and back to uh, back to the research, uh, looking at more scientific papers, looking at different angles, and trying to bring the most rounded picture of the topic as possible. Right now, most of my efforts are going into starting up this EFL program, where we're taking content from our Real Talk events and translating it into an EFL platform where we can teach English and still have these awesome topical conversations. We're demoing classes, we're getting the content ready for EFL classrooms and seeing how this is going to translate to a classroom setting. At the very start, we were we were still using our uh, keynote files for our presentations. So I was organizing those presentations to make them usable for all local chapter leaders, not just Chiang Mai, because at the time the presentations were only were used by Chiang Mai local chapter leader. So it has a lot of specific venues like food for thought, something like that, and old staff staff members. So I took them all out. Basically just refine the presentation. A little bit of branding stuff and also helping out with content design. I really like doing content design, so helping refine our presentations as they are, helping build some new presentations. I review the topics each week, setting up the projector as well as make sure that all the equipment is working. I do topics such as social media, psychedelics, um, conspiracy theories. Organizing event resources using the Dropbox and the Google Sheet. It was a very complicated process. Recently, I have been creating supplementary documents or materials, infographic, vocabulary sheets for non-native English speakers. Now I'm also posting social daily social media posts on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Make sure to check them out. As haikus and drawing submissions are artwork created by the team, the artwork team, announcements, factlets, quotes that are related to our organization. Then recently I've been involved in the, the huge transition in keynote files to Google Slides because that would make it a lot easier for people who do not have Macs and also create web pages for each topic. I think really my role is just to help people know what questions to ask. My role is like giving a little bit of information, helping people feel comfortable with the event, the topic, the idea of talking about this thing that may be kind of vulnerable for a lot of people. Then just posing questions, allowing people an opportunity to have discussions. I don't pretend to be an expert in any of this stuff. Still finding new photos, new legal photos from a stock image service called Envato Element. So all of the pictures we use will now be will not be subjected to copyright and we will legally own them. I've been a philosophy nerd kind of my whole life. Never like formally doing it, but just like, you know, that annoying guy at parties, essentially. I met John through a friend. I always wanted to go to this event, really. Ever since I've, I've been a kid, I've always wanted to go to an event where people just talk about philosophy and have really candid discussions about intellectual topics. And, and I find those really difficult to define, you know. Curtis is actually my boyfriend. And I know Curtis is struggling with uh, operations and, and admin stuff for, for this project. So I decided to step in and help them. I met John a couple of years ago, right before he decided to really expand Real Talk philosophy from a bi-weekly event in Hanoi to a global events company. And we got along really well and we seem to think very similarly about things. We both have a passion for philosophy and I slowly got involved. What I did with John was I started going through the presentations that he developed and offering what insight I could into improving them. This eventually put me into the position of being research analyst once we had a small team devoted just to research. I first heard about your talk philosophy from John's friend. After I graduated, she reached out to me and told me that her friend John is looking for a project assistant. I looked at the organization and read the motto of the organization, tearing apart, the beliefs that tear us, tear us apart, and I absolutely buy it. It's like, I want to work for this 
organization is such a meaningful thing to do. Over 25 years, I've been a communication coach and, and, and mediator, conflict resolution, helping people resolve their conflicts through good communication skills and reflection and understanding. Some work around depolarization in America, trying to teach the skills uh, for people to be able to communicate better across political divides. And I have a real passion for change as well, too. I think we have a lot of major problems right now that we have to learn how to communicate well about. So that's been my interest and passion. And John Dallas reached out to me. He found my website and thought we should have a talk. And then after we talked and I heard what Real Talk Philosophy was about, I got super excited for the program. And I just had this immediate yes to, to, to get involved and try to help it uh, you know, go much, much bigger. So I first met John and was introduced to the Philosophy Forum uh, by attending an event. The very first event I went to was a discussion on the ethics of pornography and I loved the format of the forum and the enthusiasm of the presenter and also the opportunity to talk about in-depth um, important issues with members of the community. I loved the format of the forum and the enthusiasm of the presenter and also the opportunity to talk about in-depth um, important issues with members of the community. It's been a cool, cool ride. I actually have never attended a Real Talk philosophy event that I wasn't hosting until I haven't ever attended an in-person one. I met John and we met at like a jam night in Chiang Mai and I was originally trying to recruit him to play in my band and then he told me about the philosophy forum which I'd heard of because I'd like seen it at, we, at, the, at the local music festival. Shortly after that I was still in touch with John and then I flew over for a visa run over to Da Nang and then coronavirus happened and I was stuck separated from all of my girlfriend and all of my stuff in Da Nang, Vietnam for nine months and during that time I attended some of John's online philosophy forum events and loved it and kind of got meshed in it real quick. Either he, either he threw it out as an idea to the group or I like suggested starting up one somewhere up in Da Nang. Either way, we launched the forum in Da Nang and it was the first ever time it had taken place outside of Hanoi and it was a great success. We like accumulated an awesome crowd of people in Da Nang and we hosted like I think like upwards of 10 events before I had to leave. So we did, we did about 10 different events it's kind of the first time it had ever been done outside of Hanoi. It was the first time it had ever like, been done consistently through a different host other than John. I had never seen John's style outside of the online event, so it was kind of just like new, completely new territory. Um, and it was fun. It was awesome. Um, and after I left, I handed over the reins of the Danang, what was the Danang philosophy for, and now Real Talk Danang. I handed the reins over to Matt and Valentina, who have taken it and run with it ever since. And I think it's still going strong. They're still doing a great job. Job, so, yeah. I love what Real Talk Philosophy does. Like Real Talk Philosophy encourages like people in the world in how to say acceptance from other different opinions and also encourage people to use their critical thinking. The key point or element is that we are working to create a safe sharing environment for real authentic connections. I think part of the the impact is just like on an individual of saying yeah you know what I actually hadn't really never thought about this topic a lot like let me dedicate some time to really delve deeper into this. And the opportunity to learn from other people's experiences that they may not have uh, have experienced before. Singaporeans tend to just follow trends and just follow opinions of people around them. They're not very opinionated so I guess Real Talk will kind of be able to help them develop more perspectives and um, understand more about other people's experiences instead of just like following the mold and going against, going uh, with the grain. We'll be in many cities around the world and that will have such, a, such an immense impact in depolarizing and directing people's behavior into in the right way by stimulating meaningful con conversations in the communities it's very important to have a neutral space for everyone to come together and discuss topics and problems and we don't have that right now around the world. Real Talk gives us an opportunity to dive deep into topics that are absolutely vital to discuss but aren't 
part of normal community discourse. Getting people to have these conversations off of social media and face to face, I think is really vital. The opportunity to converse about these things in a forum that allows dissension and like disagreement. Often when you have a conversation with someone in person, even if you begin with, uh, with a complete disagreement, you will get to a point where you appreciate their point of view, even if you don't uh, com completely agree with it. Before, it's just like we need to be the same, or we need to be, we need to agree with each other to to have a connection. But now we can be different, and we still share a very genuine human connections. The discussions between people is, is what the events are all about. Um, being able to sit down with a complete stranger and discuss the intricacies of pornography and the social impacts is something that is very unique to the Philosophy Forum. Real Talk provides an opportunity for people to really get to know what they believe about a topic. It connects people who wouldn't necessarily have uh, found each other, ideologically or, or otherwise. So Real Talk gives us the opportunity to cut past the small talk, and I think that's that's been a real benefit to the community here. It's also a brilliant way to make you challenge your own beliefs. Until, until you've had an argument with somebody or had an in-depth discussion where your views have really been challenged, you don't actually know your views. I love it. I do think that there is a strong need to cultivate community spaces where people can talk through kind of like these important social issues or equal sharing of ideas is happening. We do have this increasing cultural divide, an increasingly intense culture war that's happening where people just aren't listening to each other. People do need to learn how to talk and engage with each other and, and listen to people that are different from us because it's becoming increasingly impossible. And all of the forces of, that are dictating our social structures of society, namely social media, are just like not are just not encouraging people talking to each other, people that are different to them. I think it is becoming increasingly necessary to have spaces where people are actually like listening to and getting to know, just more, more than listening to, but actually like getting to know people that are different from them. And hopefully diffuse any potential like <laughs> civil wars that are inevitably coming up. Real Talk's biggest potential for helping the world is helping cultivate these spaces where conversations are happening, people are listening to each other and defusing these and diffusing whatever misconceptions they might have about each other and then ideally having the good ideas thrive and combating bad ideas. I do think there are bad ideologies and bad ideas out there, um, but I do think that people that are holding on to those things aren't going to necessarily change those unless they're like feeling heard and also hearing other perspectives. It's a hot question. It's a really tough one because I, there haven't been, there hasn't been anything that has been overall negative. It's a hard question because I, I thoroughly enjoyed the work. I know, there hasn't really been a ton of like difficulties in this process. As I said, my boss is super friendly and caring and my teammates, <laughs> my teammates are lovely too. This job is very flexible and it's it's not stressful at all. Because Curtis and I, we have full-time jobs, so it's hard for us to attend it on like a weekday during working hours. There are some people who, you know, don't really have a full-time job who are doing this and they can dedicate a lot of time and this is a huge source of income for them. And then there are other people like me who like have a full-time job. I don't want to do social media advertising. Like, that's not how I want to spend my time, right? It can take up a lot of my time. <laughs> Contacting, like, team is sometimes pretty hard for me. At the moment, maybe John is taking too many roles that can be handled for one person. And he doesn't have the time to, for example, review social media posts or like, or like stick to meeting schedules because he's just overwhelmed. He's just overwhelmed with the amount of workload. We don't normally like see each other like face in face, right? We just can do something like, okay, leave the message for any particular members that we would like to talk with and then just leave that message. But sometimes it takes a lot of time to, to receive back, to get back the info that you want to yeah, proceed. Dealing with the whole COVID thing has been really a pain in the ass. With all the COVID restrictions, it's been hard to 
yeah, get people to attend because people are a bit still worried and prefer to stay at home. I mean, honestly, it's definitely been all the restrictions that we've had to, to mess around with. Uh, we're only allowed to hold events till 10.30. Uh, the most challenging part for me has been um, the cognitive dissonance I felt with some of the topics. The thing is that you can understand the topic, but learning how to present that topic in a format that people can understand and in a way that people don't get triggered or angry, that is where the, that's where it takes a bit of time because you're trying to, you, you understand the topics, you understand the ideas, but you're putting it in the real talk format, which is designed in a way to not anger anyone, which is great. But to be honest, it's, it's worse than in the end because in the end I still end up learning something. That's, and that's about it, so I advise I have a lot of fun working with the team. It's often been challenging because this is like a very new thing, because like everything, it's like all of our systems are new. Um, everything is kind of like we're, we're building them and figuring stuff out as we go. Um, I think it has been frustrating at times to like have um, we're like, you know, we're setting, we're setting standards for like standards and protocols for things as we go. So often like we'll put like a bunch of work into something and it'll just get lost further down the line because it's, because we're, we're still figuring out our organizational systems. Um, I think these are growing pains with any new organization. Starting at the Danone was super smooth. We just had like a few like awkward things because it was like a first ever thing that hadn't been done before. So we had like some like things with like the content and translating it and the amount of work that we were putting into like getting it ready for somebody to be essentially to have this material be presented to somebody else. And I wouldn't really say it was difficult ever, it was just work that had to be done. I think the entire thing was, was really easy. I think it was a really easy process. John's easy to work with. He's an awesome boss slash uh, partner that just like has really good vision for things and just like kind of loves to give people some creative freedom within that. So I think right now with the EFL program, the big difficulties are we don't really have a concrete vision for exactly what it's going to look like. So like I spent a lot of time kind of refining material down an avenue that just ended up kind of being a dead end um, in terms of, so like a lot of the work of the past few months have been me just trying to figure out how to make it fit. And it was just ended up being too much work, but like I think with a product launch like this, it's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of failed avenues that we go down and a lot of things that we just need to pivot. We have this conflict of like how much freedom do we allow everybody have to have to contribute to like shaping of this and all at the same time, how do we have a unified enough vision to like drive that forward and those things often come into conflict. And often it just means surrendering your surrendering your creative products and just like letting them go or surrendering your ideas for how you think things should go. Right. Everything's like running really smooth. I mean with with John putting everything onto Trello for project management and then everyone communicating to Slack. Um, things are quite streamlined to be honest. I don't really have any major suggestions for change. Maybe a bit more consistency in how each of the chapters are run. I think it's great to have some flexibility, but uh, when we first started um, posting it, it was a bit tough. Maybe about some time, I, I still feel like I want to talk to my members in person. Like feeling them and feeling their energy. I like the way that we meet each other like weekly, but um, for the minor team, I would say the like for other team that is not the main team, like we should have more communication and also perhaps like meeting more. What do you think about letting a different members to host the meeting every week? It can be a burden, but just like let that member prepare and suggest something new. I think the sorts of changes that I would want to see are the types of things that we can only have once we're like making money as an organization. So obviously making sure that like everybody's getting compensated for their time. And you know, a lot of it right now is dependent on it essentially being a passion project for most of the people involved. John's delegating his task to more people as we hire more people and as the company grows, which I'm sure we're working towards that. Clarify exact intentions on what people are allowed to do in terms of changing slides, X, Y, and Z. And hopefully it starts becoming profitable and people are able to start, uh, you know, having, I think, I think we'll see a lot more like higher levels of commitment as people are, are, are getting paid through the system. But of course, this is another growing, growing pains thing. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. It's hard for me to say that. But I think just continuing to continuing to like value everybody's or try to take into consideration everybody's opinions, valuing everyone's time and knowing that like it like a lot of us are essentially doing this just as a passion project. Um, so yeah. I, I mentioned to John that I wanted to do a topic about um, like how uh, able-bodied people interact with handicapped people, right? And a lot of these, and this is just as like an example, a lot of these events, I don't really feel comfortable talking about. In the sense that like, I, I, it's not that I don't feel comfortable, but I, I don't feel that my experience is worthwhile in a way that someone could, would connect with it, right? I'm not an authority in any of this stuff, you know? Like I can help guide a conversation, but like to do a 10 minute interview or 30 minute interview with someone would not only be like awesome for the audience and excellent for me, but like also it engages that person and like that that community of like, hey, we're people who are interested in what you guys are going through uh, and like we want to work with you guys, right? Like that that's, an, I think that's a really valuable experience. I know that in the presentation, the content has to be neutral. You can't really, manipulate the content in a way that will drive people's behavior towards one thing, one particular solution. But I think in the discussion questions, however, we can we can lead them to like changing behaviors. Which is which would be really impactful for the societies. At the moment I think the presentations are created in a way to stimulate meaningful conversations, right? But not enough in stimulating change in behavior. Maybe you can have more discussions, questions that direct towards something like, how do we do this? How do we fix this? Something like that. I think what will be really needed with Real Talk as we continue to expand and grow is an increase in diversity of background and diversity of thought with the people that we're working with. So um, at the moment, we are all incredibly liberal. I think if we are to give a true uh, representation of all views and also make Real Talk a platform where everybody feels like they can contribute, um, potentially reaching out to people with not with as liberal views as a lot of us have. As much as I personally can try to make sure that my research covers all viewpoints, I am um, in my mind, I am a certain point. I, I, I come from a certain place. Um, and so it, the research will always be slightly biased. But in terms of real talk and the process itself, I have nothing but good things to say. <laughs> it's been wonderful. Building my confidence while I'm presenting, as well as um, building confidence with talking to other people. There is a lot of things to, to discover. At the beginning, I have the belief about myself that I couldn't do this. I overcome a lot of negative beliefs about myself. I would say I've become a bit more open-minded and more a better listener, like through the, the events. A bit more outspoken and, share, and sharing my experiences and opinions. Because usually I'm like a bit quieter and I prefer to listen rather than talk. The digital skills. I've learned so much about organizing folders and working on presentations, both Keynote and Google Slides, and work documents, and especially Trello. Like, John introduced me to Trello, uh, a super helpful, which is, I'm studying at a university, and it has been super helpful in organizing my unique works. I think it is impossible to narrow down all of the many things I've learned um, working with Real Talk Philosophy to just one thing. As well as myself learning more within each topic, if you think you know something, double check because there is so much more information out there than we have any idea of can even comfortable with it. The thing I've learned has been how easy it is to get people talking about this stuff um, because people are interested even if they don't necessarily know it when they, when they walk in the door. Definitely I think having an open mind and I have started a research topic uh, sometimes thinking that I believe one thing and then through proper, properly listening to other people's opinions and really delving into the scientific research I've realized that maybe I was coming at a topic from a completely wrong angle. I'm surprised how many people are interested in it. I, I'm surprised how many people are really into it. I wasn't really sure getting into this, how much of a demand there would be for this type of thing. I mean, to be honest, like, as someone who, like, talks about philosophy all the time, usually people hate philosophy. 
Uh, and I'm surprised how many people are really engaged with it and like think it could be really fun. How willing people are to actually like listen and learn. I mean, even people I who I thought would hate philosophy. I think diving into this, there's this kind of like sense of hopelessness that people don't really want to engage with people different from them. I've been endlessly surprised by like the wisdom and openness of people that have come out to these events. But I'm continually, continually impressed by the wisdom of people that I meet and things like this. People have a lot to offer and people have a lot, a lot of ways in which they are willing to like engage with, engage with things that are different, engage with ideas. I don't know. I didn't really have a hard conception for it when we started because it was just kind of like an experiment of running in a different city. Um, you know, I'd heard stories about how in Hanoi, which you know, was 10 times the size of Denon, it had 100, 150 people come out on any given night. At the time, I didn't know how big Danan was, but I very quickly learned how big Danan was because I saw the extent of the social scene in like a few months. <laughs> um, obviously, there was like room for growth, but um, it was clear that it wasn't going to grow anywhere near the size of Hanoi just because the, uh, just the city was tiny. Um, so I think. I like expected it to continue growing, but I think that there wasn't really a ton of room for growth in Denon. But I don't know, I didn't really have strong expectations going into it. I think it exceeded my expectations. The success in Denon exceeded my expectations after a while because I, I didn't know if the, if the community was going to love the events or not. Um, but people did. People loved them and people came out consistently and gave great raving reviews. I'm learning a lot more about this. To be honest, I didn't expect that we would need to put in so much effort and so much, um, there are so many like little things to be done leading up to the event and that it's actually more time consuming than I expected. Uh, but maybe it's just because like, this is the beginning and we haven't really fine-tuned all our processes and streamlined everything yet. So I'm hoping that once we uh, follow that and we have momentum, then it'll be a lot easier. This work provides me a lot of like opportunity to improve my skill, like interpreters, personal skill and also with some professional skill is beyond my expectation, I would say. It's all good. Thanks. The last thing I would love to add is that uh, I'm very grateful. It's been fun. <laughs> it's been hella fun learning and um, presenting in front of people. So far, it's been a good experience. I think everyone that I've met in real talk um, they're very nice and very open and I'm excited to get this all started again once the lockdown is over Singapore yeah I, I feel happier when I have this project in my life I would say even though it's a little bit stressful in the beginning but yeah I, overall I feel like it's good for me personally as well because I get to learn more about the world which is exactly what I wanted it was one of my goals for 2021 to like learn more about the world and this was like the perfect thing to come in just a massive thank Thank you for being given the opportunity to be part of this movement and be part and to be able to contribute has been a brilliant experience and uh, yeah I'm incredibly excited to see where Real Talk Philosophy will go in the future because uh, it has so much potential. I'm inspired on a daily basis by what Real Talk Philosophy does um, and I'm just very privileged to be to be a part of it. Really wonderful talking to you Jianliqi. Too, man. Too, Thank, too, you so Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Awesome. Nice to see you again. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for inviting me to, to have this discussion.